Welcome to the Limitless Entrepreneur Podcast, your weekly dose of strategies and mindset tools to build a business in alignment with your purpose and to get you playing a bigger game. I'm your host, Nicole Lano. Hello and welcome to the Limitless Entrepreneur Podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Nicole Lano, and we are here today with a fun, fun episode. I really love these. Um, I'm going to do a another one of our celebrity human design readings, which I'm so excited about because I just love my job. I love looking at charts. I love looking at charts. I love looking at charts for my clients. I love helping figuring to people figure out life's problems, like why are things not working? Um, I love this whole idea, like I'm obsessed with acupuncture and acupuncture kind of has this premise that if Eastern medicine in general says like, if something's wrong, it's not right. Something needs to be fixed. If you don't feel good, you should, you should feel good. And human design is the exact same thing. Things should move smoothly if you are in alignment with your design. So, and I get super excited about these episodes because I get to see if people are living with it in or out of their alignment. And today's episode is Adele. Yay, everybody loves Adele and I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> She's actually quite in alignment for herself um, for a, a lot of what's in her chart. I obviously don't know the woman, but um, we, we do know what we can observe. And that's what I find so powerful about these episodes. I feel like you and I can be on the same page about maybe what we've taken in, what we've seen the person do. I try to really stay away from opinion and stay in my lane of just seeing like, what have we observed? What have we seen? What is the public feedback sometimes? But I try to keep my opinion out of it and just really give you like, here's what's in the chart versus here's what we see. So I hope that um, I hope that you find these episodes helpful. Let me know. Take a little screenshot, put it in your Instagram stories and tag me. I'm at Nicole Lano official to let me know what you think about these. Let me know if you love this episode. Let me know if they're helpful. Are they helping you get in alignment with your design and understand yourself more um, as I explain these? So I, 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 I would love to hear from you what you're thinking about these episodes and you know what are you, what are you taking away from them? A um, couple of housekeeping things before we start. I want to let you know a little bit about what we have going on here. We have two free guides available for you. We have the float activity guide, which is all about how you can get into greater alignment, be more productive, get greater results while reducing hours, reducing work and staying in flow. It actually helps you get to flow. Um, you can get that at nicolano.me forward slash productivity. And then we also have a deconditioning guide, which is all about getting all of the not self themes. So all the ways that you are being pulled out of alignment for your open centers, we focus on open centers in this guide. You can get a free guide on how to start realigning and clearing out and deconditioning your open space. Um, and we have a free guide there for you. It's at nicolano.me forward slash decondition. You can grab that free guide. And if you're loving these readings so much and you want to sign up for your own and get your own little dive, deep dive into your design and how it lays over your life, um, please come book a reading with me. Um, we'll link all of this up in the show notes for you. We'll have all of those links for you. Or you could go to nicolino.me for, um, and then click the work with me section and you can see where you can book a reading with me. All right. So let's dive in. Miss Adele. Adele is a two five manifester, emotional manifester. Her emotion, she's an emotional authority and she's a manifester. And we haven't done one of these for an, for a manifester yet. And I was, I'm not going to say that I watched the Grammys cause I just, I don't know why I just, I'm not that into award shows these days. I, they kind of bore me. Um, but I do watch clips of them. I, I have a short attention span for that stuff. So I like to watch little clips and I saw Adele there. Of course, I saw her like all dancing with Lizzo and stuff. And, um, and I looked at her chart a long time ago and I was like, oh, this would be an interesting thing to do on the show. So I wanted to talk about this. Um, just, we also, we haven't done a manifester and I wanted to dive into what makes a manifester a manifester. So one of the things we'll start there, we start with type and we work our way down and I'm going to kind of just highlight some of the things that I think are really interesting about her chart. Now, what do we know about Adele? We know that she was wildly successful out of the gate. Like she showed up on SNL. I don't even know how many years ago she was 21 at the time. Cause her album was called 21. She shows up on SNL and she just like a juggernaut took off into the stratosphere. 
right? We know that she has, like, there's been controversy over her losing a lot of weight recently. I don't know why that's controversial, but that has been a thing. Um, people have sort of projected um, onto her what she should or shouldn't be. Should she be proud to be big? Should she be this? Or um, there, there have been a lot of a lot of um, opinions thrown around about her weight loss. Um, and, and, and in general though, I think there's a, there's a sense that she is a down to earth grounded person. Um, I think that that's something you hear a lot that she's remained real through this whole thing. I know my own mother saw her back when the 21 album came out. Um, she saw her at a small theater in New York. I forget which one it might've been Roseland. I think she saw her at, and she went to that show and um, and her mom brought, like, it was her birthday and her mom brought out a cake on stage and she was hugging her mom. And my mother was just so struck by, she was like, she was like, she was just like a 21 year old girl. There wasn't this like air of I'm the biggest star in the world right now. Um, so, so there is this feeling like she's relatable. People feel like they know her. Um, she curses. She still speaks with her very, very deep, like Cockney style accent. Um, so she's, uh, th there, there is the sense that people feel connected to her. So what I want to dive into a little bit, there are lots of things in her chart that, uh, that, that speak to this. I think the other thing that we've seen her do is obviously she's, she's deeply, she has these really impactful songs, like these songs where people are just like, they're crying. They do SNL skits when she's not the guest about, um, about, you know, people eating ice cream and crying while they listen to Adele songs in the office, that there's just this, she touches people in a deeply emotional level. And that's in her chart actually. And I'll get to that in just a moment. Um, there are also other themes in there of her kind of maybe knowing her direction. I think that's something that we have seen that she is very tuned in with. This is me. This is not me. This is who I am. This is where I'm going. This is who I work with. This is the type of work that I do. These are the things I will do. I won't do. She's not out all the time. She's not like what we'd consider like an overexposed person. She's certainly very uh, talked about, but you don't see her present everywhere. She's not at everything. She's not clubbing and, you know, paparazzi aren't catching her partying and doing things like that. She kind of lives sort of um, a, a, a little, I guess, as quietly as someone of her uh, her level of fame can be. She has her residency in Las Vegas right now, which is sold out for, I don't even know how long. Um, so, so let's dive into the chart. So she is a manifester. Um, since this is a podcast, I'll just kind of let you know what she's got. Her, her, her head center, her Ajna are open. They're both, well, her head center is completely open. Her Ajna center is, is undefined. Her throat center is defined. Her G center is defined. Her ego is defined. Her spleen is defined. Sacral undefined because she's a manifester. So no, only generators or many gens would have a sacral. Um, her emotional center is defined. That's what makes her an emotional authority. And her root center is undefined. So she is an emotional manifester. And what that means is we all know that manifestors are, manifestors are the visionaries, the the initiators in the collective. They're the only ones that don't have waiting in their strategy. So they just sort of make up their mind to do something and they can do it. That doesn't mean that they're doing everything that comes into their mind though. They are, especially with her emotional authority, she's gonna be a little more contemplative. She's gonna feel into things. And I think that we see that when she decides to do something or when something happens, what happens with manifestors is it's not just that they're able to do it. They they move like a Ferrari. They move very fast, um, personally, and things move very fast when they are in alignment with who they are and with what they are initiating. So when a manifestor decides to do something, what we see happen is this little phenomenon where just people just start like gathering around this person and being like, yes, let me help. Let me help. Let me help. <laughs> How can I help you on the, in this venture and on this journey? Um, they chart the course, they look and say, this is where we're going. And then a whole team of people just start to appear to support whatever that journey is. This is the aligned 
the aligned journey of a manifester. And I think we saw that with her career that she kind of, she came on the scene and people were just like, yes, 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 yes. I mean, she came on to SNL without like anyone ever hearing of her. Um, so there's, there's just this sort of like parting of the seas for manifestors when, when they are doing what is right and true and correct for them, all the universe conspires to assist them. It's just sort of how it works. The right people, the right opportunities, the right things just sort of fall into place when they're in alignment. So if you're a manifester listening to this, it's really about you finding your alignment, which is going to allow those pieces to just sort of start to come into place. Where it falls off is when you push and you're worried about when is the next thing coming? When can I move on this thing? When's my next idea? When's the next thing for me to initiate on going to show up? You've got to give space for it to show up and trust that when it's time for you to move, the moving will happen effortlessly. Things will just start to come together. So this idea of like, I'm running out of time or how am I going to pull all of this together? It just will come together. I've seen it happen. It's kind of miraculous. I'm sort of jealous. <laughs> it's, it's very exciting to see aligned manifestors move. So some of the highlights for her, because I'm not going to do a full reading because we only have a certain amount of time and I don't want to take up too much of your time in these episodes. But some of the things that I want to highlight of how alignment works and just one of these things that as I'm reading the chart, I'm just going, oh my God, she has this, she has this. First thing that jumps out, out to me is that her, her incarnation cross, which that's your purpose in life. That's if you are in alignment, this is kind of the purpose that blooms. And she has the, the, the cross of the Sphinx, which is, means all four of her gates, the incarnation cross is made up of your conscious sun, your conscious earth, your unconscious sun, and your unconscious earth gates. Those four gates make up your incarnation cross. Her incarnation cross, all four of those gates are in the G center. Now the G center is the center of self-love, identity, purpose, direction, love of the body, love of the spirit, leadership, all of that is in the G center. That's, that's the themes of the G center. Now hers, are all four of her, so her whole purpose has to do with who I am, where I'm going, my creative expression, the way that I lead and the way that I, the, the way that I listen and take things in. So I'm listening, I'm putting out leadership energy, I'm leading with my self-expression and this innate internal, uh, internal feeling of direction. Her conscious son is gate two, which is the gate of direction. I know where I'm going. I know what my purpose is. Oh, full steam ahead. People with this, with the cross of the Sphinx, I know several people with this and I've worked with several people with this and y'all are, are magical if you have this. Um, when you're tuned to your direction, when you decide you are going somewhere, when you truly believe that this is who you are, so in the case of Adele, you can look at this and say, if she believed that she was a star, if she believed that she was going to be a great singer and she was going to have this tremendous career and this was all going to happen for her where down to her core identity, she believed that that was who she was. Not that these things were going to happen, but who she was. I mean, the speed with which these people move will blow your mind. And that's kind of what we saw with her. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, of course she's, her whole being is rooted in, I know who I am. Now she also has the channel of awakening, which goes from the gate 10 in the G center to the throat center. This is, it's the channel of awakening. What do we need for an awakening? We need self-love, acceptance, and self-trust. And it needs to, and, and this is about it being expressed, being able to express, I am this, I love myself, and this is where I'm going. Like that is that expression of, and we're thinking about this in the terms of causing an awakening. And I think what's beautiful here is that she has gate 10 in, in four places in her chart. Gate 10 is that center that says like, I love myself, I accept myself, I love myself, I love myself, I believe this, I am this. And I love myself unconditionally. And she's got this in four places. And 
her gate 10, when, when you have that, like, I think what we see with her is that I think she does love herself. I think she loved herself. I think she thought, probably thought she was beautiful. I think that she, there's, there's a quiet confidence about her that, that I think you could feel. And I think that's a, a healthy expression of this gate 10 that she has in four placements. So now if this were unhealthy, she would think I'm not enough. I'm not good. I'm no good. But that being in a healthy expression, I'm sure it didn't hurt that she was getting reinforced from the outside world. But this is a very internal thing. This is how you feel about yourself. And I, I think that she feels um, that, that she is worthy inherently. I'm good enough. I love myself. I think that's where that confidence comes from. And that's the channel of awakening. When you love yourself, when you believe that you are, you are, you completely and totally trust yourself and you accept all the things about yourself, you're not perfect. That's not what gate 10 says. That's not what the channel of awakening says. It's not saying like I'm perfect, although that would be um, an overactive <laughs> expression of it. it would be like narcissism, which certainly <laughs> happens. But gate 10 to, to gate 20, this channel of awakening is about, I love and accept myself just as I am. And I put that energy out in the world and I do that and I communicate that all the time. And I think that that's something that you see from her. Now, I really want to get to her gate, her, her channel of openness which is the channel 1222. It goes from the throat center, it connects the throat center to the emotional center, um, to the solar plexus. This is what makes her a manifester. This is the direct connection from the, um, from the solar plexus, which is a motor. So, and that's what makes manifestors manifestors is they have a motor directly or indirectly connected to the throat and they have no sacral center defined. So she has this direct connection, solar plexus, emotions are able to just come right out her mouth, basically. And I think you feel that from her. I think you feel that. That's why she sings these songs like, um, she, she sings these song, songs like someone like you, and we're all just weeping. You feel it. Because this is a gate of, this is a channel, excuse me, of of being able to express your emotions, the deep passion. It's, it's individual energy. That's what makes it manifested. It's, it's individual energy. It's creative energy. And it's because it's individual. I mean, that, that's what makes it even more of a manifestor channel because manifestors are, are, are very much their own authority by design. They're not looking for something from the outside world to respond to. They're not waiting for someone to ask them. They are the initiator. This is very creative in nature by nature. And this 1222 channel is creative in nature because it's individual and individual is about, is about changing things through your creativity, through making something new, through seeing a new way through setting a new trend. And this is about emotion and it's connected to the throat. So emotions connected to the throat. This is also very much about tonality and about frequency and the way that things are said, the way that things are sung are just as important, if not more important than what is being said. And I think that we see that with her. We see that she is just able to convey feeling in her music in a way that other people can't or few can. There's a depth to it. And I think that that is just this beautiful expression of what 1222 does. Now you don't have to be a singer. If you have this channel, you have the ability to communicate emotions. You can communicate your depth. You can communicate what other people are thinking. You also, you're feeling what other people are think feeling. You're kind of intuitive about emotions. Now, this is also, this is also moody. All creative energy is moody. <laughs> All creative energy is sort of can be melancholic because we're usually most creative when things slow down a bit. And it's like, it takes us down and says like, let, let's go to the depth of our soul. And that's what allows you because she, she doesn't have to actually have like a tragedy in her life 
to be able to feel that because she's been taken to the lowest, to the low expressions of emotions just through experiencing her emotional wave. When you're emotional, we just get emotions because we're just like, yeah, I've been there. Whether you've been there or not, that's what empathy is like for emotional authorities because we're like, we know what it's like to feel that way. Even though I don't know your experience, I know that I know the sorrow that you feel. And particularly with this, this emotional, the individual emotional wave, it goes down very low, really low. It can be depressive if you don't know what's happening. But if you do, I always call these like singer songwriter channels, these individual waves in the emotional wave, they are, they're, they're about going to the depth and being able to convey it. This one is about conveying it, about being able to put it out there through her voice. And I think you see that just over a time and time again, she has these gut wrenching songs that everybody is just like, she just, she's just piercing your heart with her voice and with the message she's putting out there with this song and with her voice and with the way that she's showing up with it. The last thing I'll bring up is her, she's a two five and which is really interesting because we haven't had, we haven't talked about this profile on the show before. So I want to just kind of highlight a little something about it without going too, too deep, but the two five profile, um, we're dealing with two projection fields. So if you haven't listened to my episode on the projection field, I I'm sorry, I don't know what number it is because I wasn't planning on necessarily referencing it, but please go back and listen to that. If you have a two or a five in your profile, you should understand that you are dealing with the projection field and she's dealing with it in both ways. She's dealing with the two which the two is people can like see into you. If you have a two line profile anywhere, if you're two in the front or two in the back, she's a two in the front in this one being a two five. Um, if you have a two in your profile, people just sort of like can just see right into you and go, Hey, you know what? You'd be good at this. Hey, you know what? You would be good at that. Typically people are seeing the gifts in the two because the two is the natural, just sort of naturally good at things. And I think you've seen that with her. And I think people, potentially could have seen more in her than she saw in herself at times. At least that is a, that is a hallmark of the two is that they can deny their gifts that other people see because they're like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't really, I don't really work at it. I, I didn't go to school for it. I didn't, I just do it. It's just something I do. That's the low frequency of the two, not owning the gift, I'm not saying that she didn't own her gift. I think she owns her gifts very much, but the two is also the hermit you need a lot of alone time. Um, they do well to hermit away and to be secluded and to take time for themselves away from their partners, away from everybody to just nurture themselves through alone time. Um, and you do see her pull back from the public eye, pull back pretty private, a very two energy. And then you have the five though. The five has the projection from the other side. The projection is people see what they need to see for themselves in you. It's transpersonal leadership energy. I think you can lead us to here. I think you can help us do this. There's always something that people need from the five. So I think, but I think you see her kind of owning her leadership, owning her, and it's not traditional leadership, but owning her place, owning like I deserve to be here. Um, I deserve to, I, I deserve to be a kind of a leader in my industry. Um, and, 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 and so we see this, this combination of these two. Now the two, five can be reclusive at times because sometimes the projections get to be too much and it can be disorienting because so many people are telling you what they see and it, it does not necessarily jive with how you see yourself. And that's certainly very, very true with the five, um, because it doesn't have anything to necessarily do with us. If you're a five line, there are people telling you things about you that really have more to do with them than with you for better or for worse. That's, that's them telling you that you're amazing. And that's them telling you that you are, you're a terrible person. Um, it actually has more to do with you, with them than it does with you. And then the two, they're looking into you and they're seeing things that you maybe can't see, or you're denying about yourself or you own it. Or you own it is the other way. That's the, that's the aligned way of saying that I know who I am. So for her, it would be gate 10 and gate 10 saying like, I know who I am. I love myself. And if someone sees what I see in me, then I accept it. 
if someone sees more than I see in me, then maybe I investigate it, but I don't take it at face value. Um, but I allow myself to be called out. I allow myself to be chosen because the two is kind of about being chosen. Um, the five is two, but it's a different type. It's a different type of choosing. It's a different type of selecting. People are calling you out in a different way. They're calling you out to do something. The two, they're calling you out to be who you are. So I hope that you found this helpful. I hope you liked this episode. Please, like I said, take a screenshot, share it on Instagram, tag me. I'm at Nicole Lano official. I'd love to know what you heard about, what you thought about this episode. Uh, what came up for you? Do you have any of these channels, any of this energy? I wish I could dive into more of her chart because it's fascinating. Um, but I hope that you see, you can see a, again, an example of somebody who maybe is using their energy well, who is, who is stepping out and, and how you can use a lot of times people with emotional authority feel like they are, you know, they're, they're, they're behind the game. They're behind the eight ball. Like it's, it's harder to be emotional and yeah, maybe it is. I think we're emotional beings, but there's reasons and there's gifts and all of it. And so if you have that emotional wave where it can take you down to the depths where you feel really depressed, there's also great creativity that comes with it. There's great gifts with it. And you just have to find those and you have to harness that and dare to go down to the depth so that you can find those gifts because that's where the treasure is. All right. So I hope you love this. Please download those two free guides, the productivity, the floativity guide, which is at nicolano.me forward slash productivity, deconditioning guide, nicolano forward slash deconditioning. Both are free. And then if you want to book a reading with me, go to nicolano.me and then go to the work with me section and you can book a reading with me and we can dive into your unique chart and see what is flowing or not flowing for you and how to get you back into alignment. So I hope you loved this. Um, remember, you are only limited by the limitations that you accept. And when you stop accepting those limitations, that's when you become limitless. So go out there and be limitless, everybody. I'll see you in the next episode. If you loved this episode, please leave us a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you're listening to this podcast. And if you want to stay in touch with us, we would love to have you as a part of our Facebook community, Practical Manifestors. It's a community for process-driven women looking for clear and actionable steps to embodying a life of wealth and alignment. Join us at Practical Manifestors in Facebook or go to www.innerceogroup.com.